Hello, everybody. I have a massive treat for you today. As you know, I've spent a long time studying bee shamanism, but through the period of learning about bee shamanism and shamanism in general, I've been exposed to many different writers. And out of the blue last week was a fellow writer who is publishing under the same publishing house as me, so I'd love to talk to you about your book. And when I read her book, I absolutely fell in love and I thought I've got to introduce you to Rosanna. Rosanna, say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. It's so <laughs> lovely to meet you. <laughs> Tell everyone a little bit about you. Well, my name is Rosanna and I am a mother, a wife and an author of two books. And I'm a shamanic practitioner of, I think, about 30 years now. Uh, also a psychic medium and a healer. And I just do all types of wonderful work in the metaphysical world and enchanting, the enchanting world, let's call it. Enchanting is the perfect, <laughs> perfect word. So to tell everybody, I just said to, to Rosanna, I was reading her book at three o'clock in the morning and my oh, husband woke up and went, <laughs> well, actually he wasn't so polite because he doesn't use the words like, what are you doing? That's not <laughs> But I said, I am reading this book. I cannot put it down. It's like reading a dream. Many congratulations. It comes out on Saturday? No. It comes out on Friday. Friday. 25th in the UK and yeah. Europe and September 1st in Canada and the US. So tell people about <laughs> Enter the Journey. Oh, Enter the Journey. Well, it's a mystical guide of uh, rebirth and renewal. And really the essence of Enter the Journey is about letting go, the art of letting go, um, the art of inviting your spirit allies, your power animals into your life and building a further relationship, a deeper relationship to them. But not only your spirit allies, our beautiful earth mother and all the spirits of the land, um, they're, they're, they're very much alive. Absolutely. And of course, you know that my my uh, spirit animals are bees, but, mm -hmm. but mostly my guides are plants. Whereas oh, yours so seem cool. to be mainly mammals. They do. Yes. Yeah. So I have to tell people that the, the, the two most magical stories I've read so far are about polar bears and wolves. So it's very, very eclectic. So you know <laughs> that you've got my friend Tundra behind you, haven't you? Oh, yes. Let everyone oh, meet where Tundra. Where go? Let's see. <laughs> Look at that beautiful wolf. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Tundra. Oh, Tundra appeared in my first book. She's one of my spirit animals and um, really guided me through a journey uh, many years ago. I think we're going back to 1995 and 1996 when I went to Greenland and uh, just started having these incredible journeys with, with Tundra along with all of my other spirit animals. So most of the second book is about your work in Arizona. That's right, isn't it? In Sedona. It is, it is yes. So I travel through um, Arizona. I've been going back to Sedona for over 20 years. Um, my husband and I took our kids on many road trips. And Sedona is a very sacred place. It's filled with uh, vortexes and portals and caves. And it's really a type of place where when you go, it's really important to have a clear intention because the spirits of the land and the spirit of Sedona will really work with you. So everything that you're feeling will magnify everything. So if you're wanting to work through some issues and you ask for the support, you will get it. But I have to say, ask for it to be gentle because Sedona, although it is incredibly enchanting, incredibly healing, it's also very potent. So I'm fascinated by this idea of, of intention. And I debate it at length. And I'm sure a lot of people who watch my visit, uh, videos are like, has she not done this to death yet? But I am fascinated by the way that people really state their intention to the spirits around them and to the, the magical world to be able to work in a certain way. So would you mind sharing a bit about yours? 
Um, yes. Yeah, so when we work with intention, we allow the universe to just open up for us. And when we do that, we become in clear alignment with our own natural rhythm and the rhythm of the earth and the rhythm of the universe. And when you are in that place of uh, clear intention, you enter many portals and that's when synchronicities and serendipities happen. That's when you begin to be at the right place at the right time. Um, you know, just incredible doors start to open, amazing people start to come in your life. And it's just really being in what, what we call the zone. Yeah, exactly. And how do you go about doing that? Do you do that in a ritual way? Do you always do it after you've drummed or are you setting altars or, or how does that work for you if that's not too private? Oh, no, not at all. There's various ways. Yes, I do have altars. Um, I pray a lot. My dear late mother, who just passed away in March, um, she taught me the art of praying. And I do call it an art because the art really of your heart and soul and um, so I do a lot of praying. Um, I do ritual work. I work with the earth. I give thanks. I do a lot of drumming. I do a lot of shamanic journeying and meditations. Um, it's all about coming back to yourself and coming back to that place of uh, home, really, coming back home to yourself. Again, so yes, ritualistic work, ceremonial work. Um, I do love flowers. So I I am starting to work more with flowers and, and the uh, essence and the spirit of flowers are beginning to talk. And that's another book. That's going to be book number four. Um, but um, I, I think if there was anybody who wanted to start off the journey, the shamanic journey, start with a with a gentle journey, you know, a drum journey. And again, come back to intention, intention of connecting with your spirit animal. That's how I start. When I teach uh, drumming groups and workshops, I always recommend going out in nature first and finding and connecting with a special tree. Some people go to a special cave or they go to a beach. The most important thing is you go to where you feel connected and where you feel in alignment. And, and Mother Earth is just, you know, craving for that you know look what's happening in the world so it's it's never been more crucial to connect with with our beautiful earth mother and the spirits of the stones you know and and in animism you know the spirit of the animals and as you know the plants the rocks everything yeah so i am absolutely of the mind of the belief of animism yes and i believe that there are spirits in stones but they absolutely do not speak to me however my sister is just incredible with crystals and gemstones and all of those things that that, the, that part of the earth really speaks to her and I was fascinated by your beautiful exercises around turquoise in the oh, um, yes so so I don't know if it, it's how you say it in, in America we in in England we say turquoise for the stone which it doesn't really translate I don't think in American but <laughs> I absolutely loved the work and even though like it did it doesn't resonate with me because I don't have that channel at all it's just shut I just thought oh, this is so beautiful so would you share a bit about turquoise for people oh turquoise turquoise for me is is really in my heart although I, I will you know connect it with my throat chakra um, first of all, you had said that you're not connected, but I don't believe that. I think you're <laughs> very connected, Elizabeth. I mean, Do you know what I think it is? So because I know that she'll watch this, I think it's because every time I get a jewel, my sister goes, I've got a better one. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, go on. <laughs> oh, turquoise is just, it's such a healing stone. And for me, and, and, you know, for those that have read my first book and the ones that will read my first book, I hope so, because it's actually the prequel. So I'll just hold it up here. Awakening. Yeah, so I, I, it's definitely <laughs> going to be the next book I read. So oh, the, the light's reflecting. So it's, it, it's awakening the divine soul, finding your life purpose. And I am yeah. so in love with the way that you write. Oh, oh definitely you. Be, be getting it. I think you've got thank such you so beautiful much. things to say. Well, you paint such beautiful pictures. So that's one thing, because I love that. But also, when I was writing my book about the bees and meeting the Melissa, I was very aware that I had got 
kind of three different voices. I've got the beautiful poetic voice. I've got the historical voice. And because it started off as two books and I was writing about Lemon Bomb, I had a scientific voice. And I just couldn't make them meld. And yet your lyrical voice is consistent all the way through. It's oh. so gloriously written. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. Because I know how hard it is. I it, do it, know how hard it is. Oh, it's extremely hard. And I have to say I'm dyslexic. Um, wow. you know, I, I am. But I'm, I'm um, neurodivergent as well. And I am, everything's visual. So I think in pictures, everything for me is is very visual. You can and see, you can, yeah, you can see that you think in pictures because the you know that as soon as you create a picture, it's full of color and hue, and the creatures are so alive in in the in the the words. It's so magical. Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me because when I was writing this book. That's what I wanted to put more of, you know, so the readers could really dive in and really uh, feel that they're in it. You know, they're in the scene. And, and they I are. Definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they are. And like the turquoise, you know, the turquoise meditation, the turquoise cave. Um, turquoise, because the Native American culture is so dear to my heart and um, my eldest son, his people uh, come from Arizona. And I have a lot of friends and uh, dear, you know, friends that are like family. So Arizona um, and, and the turquoise stone, it just always seems to bring about healing. So I invite anyone, you know, to pick up a turquoise stone and really uh, connect to the essence of it. And, you know, let's let's go on to even other stones, any stone in particular, you know, pick it up, hold it and really feel the essence of it because I promise you the spirit of the stones will speak to you and magical things will happen if you really open yourself up to it and allow it. Which is your preferred way of working? With what, animals, plants, stones? You know what, that's a really good question. I think all of, all of those, but I have such, I've, I've built up such a strong relationship um, to my spirit animals. So of course, every time I go out in nature, they turn up. You know, I remember I was uh, teaching a retreat in Canada and we really were out in the wilderness. And I tell everyone, you know, I, I just have this thing whenever I'm around, you know, animals in the physical world really do appear as well. <laughs> and I warn them. And of course, the next day a bear appeared. So, you know, wherever we're walking, whenever we're going out, it's just, just these incredible animals, not only in the spirit world appear, but in the physical world, they really do. So I think spirit animals, power animals, um, I have so much to say about them because for me personally, that's where my healing journey began. In the field, in Glastonbury, in the middle of a sweat lodge, and my wolves appeared and warned me about a situation. And uh, thank goodness I listened because I would have been in a cult. <laughs> that was many yeah, years ago. Yes. So ironically, you're talking about animals turning up. You've bought the wolves and my dog is just barking relentlessly out the window. So if you can hear, I'm very sorry. Oh, yes, I love dogs so much. <laughs> so and I'm cheated now because I was going to ask on tape, but I did ask you before. Because I don't like to jump through books, I, I said to Rosanna, are there any bees in your book? And she said, no, but there are in the first book. Hmm. So I would love to know about the stories of the bees from the first book. Oh, well, I, I had taken a journey and this one journey was just so incredible. I, well, when you're in a journey, you really are entering an altered state. So it is very real. And in this journey, all of these bees just landed on my body. And I wasn't frightened. It was in, incredibly empowering. And when they left, there was honey. There was honey all over my body. And all of these birds, hummingbirds, birds from everywhere just came and they were feeding off my body. It was just, it was incredible. It was beautiful. And I know that uh, the spirit of the bees are very much alive. And I know, you know, you work with the bees. Mm -hmm. That's your specialty. 
It is now. I mean, it's a relatively new thing. The plants are my specialty, really. Oh, okay. but, uh, but so I've been an aromatherapist for thirty years, like like you. So really, only for about five years. And hey. for the first two of those, I hadn't been near a bee. I was just trying to work out what is this link between lemon balm plant and these priestesses. What's oh. that about? And these ancient Greek priestesses, these Melissa eventually started to speak to me through the plant and drew me in but the funny thing was that the, the spring before my husband is the most tremendous gardener I mean he has green fingers like you've never seen and he doesn't I call him a strong silent one he doesn't like to talk at all he just like the only way you can really get conversation is to say what are you going to do today in the garden then you'll have a conversation and uh, so one day he said, and this was way, way before anything to do with the bees, he said, I've decided I'm going to build something in the garden. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I've seen this thing somebody's doing on Instagram. And I was like, you've been on Instagram? That's enlightening to me. <laughs> Didn't this thing on Instagram where this person's done this kind of hexagonal structure? And I was like, right. And so he built this hexagonal structure. And I was like, it's in the middle of the, the garden. I just kept saying to everybody, I don't get it. Don't tell him, but I do not get it. But then, as soon as it came, bees started to turn up. It was like he opened the portal. It was very, very strange. So whenever he said, well, you're the bee woman, I'll say, you started this. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. What a blessing. Yeah. That and I, so the, bee, the beehives now are down by the hexagon, and I've painted it gold. And it makes oh. sense now. It didn't make sense before, but... <laughs> Yes, it's oh. funny, isn't it? How even just symbols have a resonance through. Absolutely, that's so beautiful. And I have to say, my husband doesn't talk much either. He 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 will avoid. I think that we're I think we're twins separated by continents. I so think we are, are Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I feel very connected to you. I love your energy. Oh, love thank you. And your oils. I'm really drawn to the oils. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, there are many. That's three generations of aromatherapist stuff there. Then. Oh, fantastic. I would love to know. So actually, so let's lead on with that. So I was trained by my mom, who was like one of the first aromatherapists in this country. And her husband, my stepfather, was also a tremendous aromatherapist and fantastic dowser. He was the chairman of the British Society of Dowsers. So that knowledge was very much with me. And she was uh, an internationally known psychic. So I was born in that world. But who taught you to journey? Because you That's journey wonderful. most extraordinarily. Well, I have to say, before I started officially journeying, you know, in the drum journey or shamanic journey, my mother taught me at a young age, um, we used to talk about dreams, you know, at the breakfast table, um, in the evening before bed, we would always talk about departed loved ones that would come through in a dream. And her best friend, bless her soul, she's also departed, uh, Tula, Dimitra. She, she was a wonderful Greek lady who was like my second mom and her mother, Yaya, uh, they used to read my cup, you know, my coffee cup. So when I was about 16, they started, you know, reading it more because I was of age. And then they started teaching me how to read these coffee cups. And really that opened up a whole new world for me. So I started reading the coffee cups for friends, you know, just for, that's just for fun. And then things started to happen. So I thought, okay, I am just so fascinated with this. And then my brother, um, my late brother, who also passed away, Verge, he was fascinated with uh, the metaphysical world as well. And he used to order these time life books. I'm sorry, I just need to hold you a second. Oh, okay. One second. Oh, sorry about that. I just had to stop because <laughs> a delivery man just bought my books for my book launch next month and the yeah. dog attacked him. <laughs> that, that was not great. So, but I know exactly where we were. You were talking about doing readings from coffee cups learned by Greek women. Yes, who was like a second mum to me. And both my mom and her are in spirit now. My mother, Carmela and uh, Tula. Uh, yes, yeah, so we we did it for fun, you know, but then things started to happen. So then I delved even, even deeper 
And of course, I was talking about my brother as well. He ordered these books, Time Life books, all things metaphysical, esoteric, fascinating, you know, Egypt. And um, and then I just be became more and more fascinated. And then I always had a deep connection to Native American culture. I absolutely love and honor all cultures and um, really have a lot of deep respect for indigenous cultures for around the world, from around the world, excuse me. And really, uh, you know, how important it is to honor them. And again, in, in the book, Enter the Journey, A Mystical Guide for Rebirth and Renewal, I talk about how important it is to give thanks, give thanks to the spirits of the land. You know, the spirits are really listening and, uh, you know, just just try it for even for an exercise, you know, go out one day wherever you are in the world, put your hands on the earth. Say thank you to Mother Earth. Breathe in, take in a deep breath and allow that energy to go through your heart chakra and then give back so much love to the earth. I mean, we owe her so much. I mean, look at the devastating things that are happening in the world. We do indeed owe her so much. And I do think it's something that's really missing in the aromatherapy world now you know we have these bottles of oil and we talk about how all the plants do this and the plants do that but we forget that we owe the earth so much for that medicine mm -hmm. and that the plants are not evolving for humans they're evolving for their own purposes yeah. but they do share their medicine and, and, it, and it is time for us to start really giving that kind of respect back i think it is and and everything is very much alive and, and we tend to forget that, you know? So yes, I, I do speak to stones and I speak to the animals. I speak to my plants, you know, I tell my plants, you're doing well, I love you. Wow, look at look at this new uh, uh, bud opening up. You know, it's it's just, if we could get back into the world of gratitude, and I know it's, it's, it's not as easy as that, you know, it does take discipline, it does take dedication, but ultimately, if we get back to our own natural rhythm, again, I talk about that in Enter the Journey uh, many times, get back into the alignment of your own natural rhythm and nature, because you're one, you're really one with nature. And it, when you do that, your life completely changes and you really do create your own reality. And I think that's what it's all about, creating your own reality in alignment with the rhythm of nature. So to tell you a little bit of a story, so I've got four beehives, but only three colonies is one that's empty and uh, you can't get near them at the moment because the bees have planted this enormous hedge of borage in front of them. And uh, it's astonishing to me that every time I'll say the bees planted that, the bees wanted the, bee, the, the borage, people just go, Look at me as if I'm stark staring back mad. How can they know that so much of our food comes from bees and not think the bees would go, but I want something of my own. And so as they come out, you've got this beautiful hedge of borage all blue. You take them up and as many, you know, come up. And of course, borage seed, the self seeds itself, you know, but there is this lovely interaction between the plant. There's, it's all over the garden, way, way apart from where it was originally planted. One bush has taken over the whole garden, which drives the silent one bonkers. But <laughs> it amazes me when I say, oh, the bees planted all this borage. People look at me as if I've gone back mad. But why would they not have done? Oh, they're so intelligent. Uh, uh, unbelievably intelligent. Extremely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I wanted to know, there is a long space between your books. And the beginning of your book talks about how the spirits, your spirit guides and the animals are telling you it's time to write another book. And potentially, as I go further into the book, I will discover why it was such a big gap. But please tell me why there was a gap. Well, from a practical perspective, um, there was such a big gap um, because I was raising three children. Right. And to be honest, I had to listen to my body. Um, and I had to understand uh, balance. And I'll be honest, you know, I did learn the hard way, you know, and, and that's another thing I, I express how important it is to find balance. 
in your life. So there was a big gap. However, while that big gap was happening, I was still writing. I was still writing uh, this book mm -hmm. again, Enter the Journey, A Mystical Guide for Rebirth and Renewal. And I was writing the third book. So there is a third book in the series. And what will that be about? So that is about, uh, the premise is in India. So I went to India again. I don't want to give too much away, but it had to do with a dream. Someone came to me in a dream and um, gave me some instructions and me being who I am and I just go for it. I'm not telling everyone to just go for it, but I really listened to the guidance and I did go to India and that turned out to be another incredible journey of uh, hiking a mountain um, to an ancient temple. And that was extremely arduous and um, yeah, so I'm I'm working on the manuscript for that. That's almost completed. And I believe it'll probably come out in about a year, but I have to hand in the manuscript first. And then I've been working on a fourth book and a fifth book. Amazing, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but my children, you know, we're very much, my husband and I are very much involved um, in their in their creative life. You know, they're musicians and my daughters, my sons are musicians and my daughter is a dancer. So we are very much hands on, you know, really every step of the way we've been there and we still are. So again, it's all about balance. And of course, you know, nature teaches us everything. And I think what I wanna say about Enter the Journey, a mystical guide for rebirth and renewal, the core of this, this incredible book, which I'm really proud of because it's taught me a lot, is the art of letting go. And honestly, Elizabeth, I did not, and I'm still letting go. I really didn't realize how difficult it was to let go of so many things. And I do express in the book, you know, loosen the grip, loosen the grip. We don't realize that strong grip that we have onto things, whether it be a relationship, whether it be the loss of someone, and we're still hanging on to something, whether it be, uh, you know, emotions that we have, anger, resentment, all of those emotions that um, we all deal with. Just if, if we could sit with that and really learn the art of letting go, just like the autumn leaves falling, gracefully falling, there's so much to be learned in that. I mean, there really is an art. It, there really is. So that is very much a Melissa meditation that we do around about Samhain time. And I can remember the first time I encountered it, I was in a a very angry state. And I'd had a, no, I'm not going to say I had a, had a falling out with a friend. A friend had had a falling out with me, actually. And I was very upset about the whole thing. I didn't feel that I had... I'd played my part, but I hadn't to the extent that the that, that the outcome that had come. I was very upset, and this meditation came up in um, around about that time. And I was very much people kept saying to me, "Just let it go," and I was like, "I can't." Everything because I'm an angry person. I, I'm a, an angry person. Everything I in my being wanted to respond in some way, to reply to it, to have the last word, to put my case. But that was so powerful to me that something could just drop. Mm. And my whole demeanour towards that relation changed within 10 minutes of doing that interview, uh, of that uh, meditation, because I was just like, I just did not have that thought process in my emotional vocabulary at all to just let things drop. It's a really powerful visual cue, I think. It is. And, you know, it takes discipline and it takes practice. And again, talking about your building your relationship to spirit animals and nature, you, you know, it's like brushing your teeth, right? You, you're, you're doing it every day. If you could stay with that connection, that's really gonna help get through all those emotions. I mean, we're human. We all have those emotions. We all deal with anger and you know, resentment, grief, um, heartbreak, joy, bliss, ecstasy. Um, so if we could really be present, I'm really all about being present, not bypassing, 
the emotions. And like you said, you know, you were dealing with it and you went into a meditation and that's really how we're going to heal. Cause, cause really we're all here to heal and become empowered and become all that we were really born to be. I think so, so shamanism is obviously slightly different to, to the practice that I've got, but the, the Melissa priestesses were be shamans but you would have a priestess and a high priestess. And when you are learning the high priestess stuff now, it's very much about dealing with shadow, that stuff oh, that's yeah. going on in, in the background of your head. And I think there's so much, you know, we, we, we oh, so there's, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing where, you know, we, 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 we accept our shadow. Actually, do we accept our shadow or do we interrogate it? Mm. Do we say, what's going on with that? how what what caused you to be that trigger then what are you interacting with why did you do that mm -hmm. and just really talking to that conversation that's going on in our brain is so like illuminating i think um and i certainly i find that essential oils are really helpful for that mm -hmm. but also i think that the if you listen properly the animals will bring you those cues to say to to, to trigger you sometimes to just say you need to look at that oh absolutely i'm all for that i'm all for shadow work absolutely there's the light and there's the shadow and one cannot exist without the other mm -hmm. and you know in enter the journey we enter and we go into the mystery in the shaman's cave and when i went into that cave oh my goodness what an experience that was and i just want to say to the readers you don't have to physically get on a plane and go to, to Sedona. The essence of this book, Enter the Journey, A Mystical Guide for Rebirth and Renewal, will take you into that cave. So I wanted the book, Enter the Journey, to be all about connecting in that way, it connecting to the essence. So we go through caves, um, the Wisdom Lodge, the Crystal Cave, but back to the Shaman's Cave. You know, yes, there was a lot of shadow work in there and I am all for you know holding up a mirror in front of me and saying okay oh I really messed up you know I really need to look at that there's there's certain sides of myself that are really emerging and I don't really like them but you know they're speaking to me and they're giving me a gift I have to look at them so I embrace the shadow and and I encourage everyone to do shadow work I think the secret as well is to do it with compassion, isn't it? You know, oh, you, yes. we we, talk, we our self talk to to us to ourselves. Obviously, self talk. Yeah, it is very cruel sometimes. Oh, I think it really is. And we that, are so hard on ourselves. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and I think if we said if we said right, well, what would you say to your best friend about the way they've messed up? Absolutely certain they wouldn't speak to them uh, the way that they spoke to themselves. And so addressing that conversation can be helpful as well, I think, with Shadow Work. Yeah. Who do you think your book is of most interest and help to? Well, oh, Enter the Journey is for anybody, anybody who loves adventure, anyone who wants to be on a journey of enchantment. Um, it's really, it reads like fiction how, at times, as you probably know. However, mm -hmm. it's narrative nonfiction. So it's creative um, nonfiction. And I take the readers along the journey. So anyone who is wanting an adventure, anybody who is wanting to uh, enter the world of meditation, uh, exercises, deepening a connection, or even being introduced to their spirit animal and spirit allies, spirit guides. And really, it's for anybody. It is such a beautiful contemplative piece, you know, it really makes you think and like loosens the grip on reality. Um, oh, that's what really the intention, like it. thank you. That's what the intention was. And, and the poetic feel um, and the flow of the book really gives the readers a chance to pause. And that was intentional. I want the readers to take their time on the book, you know, if, 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 they want to pause after one chapter and work with the exercise. There's no deadline. 
you know, take your time, just go with the flow of your own natural rhythm. That's what it's all about. But ultimately, it's about getting back to yourself and embracing your relationship with Mother Earth and nature, your spirit guides and your allies. And um, everything is alive. Everything is alive. Well, I think we should leave it there. I think that's an excellent uh, ending. So um, I will ask you to send me your bits and pieces so I can put them in description so people can buy. Hopefully, we'll be posting that you're number one on, on Friday. Good luck to you. Ah, so, thank you so much. Um, I just want to say um, it did hit number one on a pre, pre-order. Did it now? <laughs> well done. It did. Thank That's you awesome. very much. But uh, yes, it's always wonderful to hit number one again in another category. And um, I just want to thank you so much, Elizabeth. I love your energy. And thank you for inviting me on this organic conversation that we're having. And um, again, I love the oils as well. They are speaking to me. So I, I'll need to speak to you about the oils. For <laughs> sure. They yeah. are speaking. And, um, and to all the listeners, thank you so much for listening and um, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So say goodbye. Stay on the line, but say goodbye and we'll talk about oil. Say bye to everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Beautiful blessings to you. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>